Hi, I'm Dr. Marty Klein, licensed marriage and family therapist and certified sex therapist. I'm here today uh, with EmpowerHer.com and we're going to talk about all things sexual. We'll even talk about some of the material from my current book, Sexual Intelligence, what we really want from sex and how to get it, and lots of other videos and things that I've done over the years. Today we're going to talk about uh, many things, including uh, some basic questions that we get uh, people writing into the site. So uh, let's just get right into it and uh, let me go to the first question. Let's see. My boyfriend pressures me to try anal sex, but I don't really want to do it. What should I do? Well, I get this question a lot in the office too. And the most important thing I can say about this is if you don't want to do something sexually, don't do something sexually. And you don't need a good reason either. Now, I'm assuming that you the listener, you, the writer, person in my office, I'm assuming that you're having sex with somebody you like and this person likes you and the two of you want to have a good experience together. If that's the case, then two people need to be deciding together what do you want to do sexually? What and when and how much and where and whether or not the window is open or closed. So when one person wants to do something and the other person doesn't want to do it, the simple answer is, sweetheart, I don't want to do that. And we can do plenty of other things. It's not like there's only two or three things that you can do sexually, and if you eliminate one of them, well, that's the end of the show. No, no, no. There are lots of things that people can do sexually. Anal sex, oral sex, hand jobs. Each of these things is only one thing. And none of them is so, 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 so special that if you eliminate that, the world comes to an end. So what do I say to my partner when my partner wants to do something that I don't want to do it? What we say is, sweetheart, I don't want to do that, and I'm certain if I do that, I'm not going to enjoy it, so let's just not do it. And if the other person says, oh, if we don't do that, it's the end of the world, then that person needs to expand their horizon a little bit. And if the other person says, if you love me, you would do that, then the answer to that needs to be, sweetheart, if you love me, you wouldn't pressure me. And if the other person says, all the other girls do it, what's wrong with you? The answer is, I'm not one of those girls. I'm me. So, question number two. Question number two. What if my boyfriend only wants to have oral sex? What do I do? I'm not sure exactly what this question means. Only wants to have oral sex. Um, some people want to get pregnant from sex, and you can't get pregnant from oral sex. So if you want to get pregnant, and he doesn't, and his solution is let's only have oral sex, this is not a conversation about oral sex. This is a conversation about let's get pregnant. No, I don't want to get pregnant. So that would be a different question. Um, what if my boyfriend only wants to have oral sex? Maybe it's because he has erection difficulties during intercourse and doesn't want to talk about it. Maybe it's because he thinks that uh, he wants you to be a virgin and he thinks that if you have intercourse, you're not a virgin, but if you have oral sex, you're still a virgin. I don't know. My boyfriend only wants to have oral sex. I would ask him, what's up with that? I would say, sweetheart, um, we've got all these other body parts here. Uh, I understand that oral sex can be really enjoyable. Uh, what is it about oral sex that's so special to you, and why don't you want to do the other stuff? And there's a good example of where a question that sounds like it's about sex, maybe it's really about communication, or maybe it's really about what's going on in somebody's head that they're not sharing. And here's another question, supposedly about oral sex. Uh, my boyfriend wants to give me oral sex, but the idea seems creepy. Uh, should I let him? I don't think anybody should let anybody do anything sexually. I think that sex is there for us to participate in enthusiastically. And if you don't feel enthusiastic about it, you shouldn't do it. Now, you might want to ask yourself what it is about oral sex that seems creepy to you. For example, some women, they think, ooh, I taste creepy down there, or ooh, I must smell terrible down there. And indeed, uh, some people um, could use a little more soap and water. But um, I think most heterosexual women underestimate how much many heterosexual men really like to go down on a woman and really like uh, sharing pleasure with their partner that way. So. If somebody wants to go down on you and, and you like them and you're willing to be sexual with them and uh, they want to go down on you but, but you think the whole idea is kind of, uh, 
um, ask them to tell you why they want to do it. Ask them to tell you what is it about that that they find so enjoyable. And if they start singing about how beautiful your vulva is, if they start singing about how good you taste down there, I would believe it. I don't think people lie about that. <laughs> and um, by the way, um, the question here says, my boyfriend wants to give me oral sex. I, I don't like that expression, to give oral sex. I think of oral sex as something that people share. There may be one mouth and one vulva or one mouth and one penis, but I don't think that one of those people is giving and one of those people is taking. I think both people are getting a lot of pleasure from that, hopefully, and in that case, it's not a giver and a taker. It's two people sharing this fabulous experience. Well, let's see. I think my boyfriend looks at porn. Exclamation point. I give him sex whenever he wants, and I'm not bad looking, so why would he resort to something like that? I'm crushed. Oh, my God. I'm crushed. Well, step one, uncrush yourself, okay? This is not the end of the world. Now, my boyfriend looks at porn, and you, the person writing the question, don't understand why. I think step one might be ask him why. And not in an accusatory fashion, but in a friendly way. Like, Joe, uh, I think we have a pretty good sex life here. Uh, I know you like sex with me. I, I know you find me kind of attractive. And yet, you're still looking at porn. I wonder why you do that. I don't know what he's going to say. I have a couple of guesses. But I'd rather you find out for yourself. Ask him why. Now, you know, maybe he'll say, well, honey, I know you think our sex is good, but the truth is it's horrible. That's probably not what he's going to say. I think that you would really uh, find it interesting to ask him, again, in a friendly way, not in an, uh, in an accusatory way. Find out why he's looking at porn. Find out what his experience is like. And find out if it really is an implicit criticism of the sex that the two of you have, or if it's an implicit criticism of you're not as attractive as he likes. It might not be. It might not be. In which case, you'll learn something about him the relationship will grow stronger because the two of you are talking to each other and you won't be quite so crushed about it. Now here's a question uh, we get a lot. Sex often hurts, especially right after my period ends. How do I manage the discomfort? Well, if this is a question about how do I enjoy sex when it hurts, the answer is you don't. And that's why you shouldn't have sex when it hurts. And if you say, well, it hurts a lot, then we need to figure out why. Is it as simple as we don't use enough lubricant? Is it more complicated? Do you have a medical condition like endometriosis? Or um, is there uh, something going on with your anatomy that a physician needs to investigate? Uh, is it, now, now, now when people say sex hurts, does that mean inside the vagina? Does that, does that mean around on the outside? Does that mean my back hurts during sex because somebody has bounced it on top of me? a little bit more uh, enthusiastically than I like. So uh, when, when a patient says to me, sex hurts, I need to find out what do you mean does it hurt? And does it hurt, uh, what kind of a pain is it? Is it a stabbing pain? Is it a burning pain? Is it a tearing pain? Is it a throbbing pain? This kind of job I have. Uh, so we need to find out a little bit more about the pain and we need to find out about the circumstances. And what I would say until you figure this out, don't do the kinds of activities that result in pain. And if you say, well, if, if we don't have sex without pain, that means we don't have sex, I would think that in the short term, that would be an improvement. Because if anybody has sex for a long enough period of time where it hurts, eventually they're not going to want to have sex ever again. And we certainly don't want that. And of course, if sex with something inside your vagina hurts, there are all kinds of ways to have sex where there doesn't have to be something inside your vagina. And if sex with your whole vulva hurts, there are plenty of ways to have sex that don't involve your vulva. Your vulva is a very small part of your whole body, and your whole body is a sexual organ. 2,000 square inches of skin and a mouth and a nose and an elbow. You want to get your elbow involved if sex with your vulva hurts. Let's see. My partner asked me to put my finger in his butt while I give him a hand job. Does this, presumably with different fingers, right? Uh, does this mean he's really gay or that he has a fetish? Well, I don't know what it means, and you don't know what it means, but there is a person who knows what it means, and we have to talk to that person. 
Oh wait, that's your partner. Yes, if you want to know what it means when your partner says something or does something or doesn't want to do something, there's an expert that you can ask and that expert is your partner. So I would say, sweetheart, what is it about my finger in your butt that you like? And he may say, oh, it helps me pretend that you're a guy because I'm really gay. That's probably not going to be the answer. The answer might be, oh, it's so nasty. It's so nasty. That might be the answer. The answer might be, well, you know, I've got lots of nerve endings up there inside my butt, and if some person that I really like with a lubricated finger puts their finger up there, it's really exciting. That's probably the answer. It doesn't mean that he's gay. Well, you know, body parts don't think of themselves as straight or gay. Body parts don't have a, don't have a nationality like that. So some people who are gay, they like a finger in their butt. Some people who are gay, they don't like a finger in their butt. And some people who are straight, they like a finger in their butt. Some people who are straight, they don't like a finger in their butt. You have to ask the person you're with. No substitute for information. And the place to get that information is not from me. It's from your partner. Well, let's see. How do I get the most out of sex? Well, there's a lot of funny answers to that. But uh, how do I get the most out of sex? Well relax and then relax some more and then relax some more number one relax number two accept your body exactly the way that it is if you're waiting to really enjoy sex after you lose five more pounds that's not the way to enjoy sex and if you have a picture of what sex is supposed to be like that's not the way to enjoy sex either the real way to enjoy sex, the real way to get the most out of it is to know what you want from sex. And what most people want is some combination of I want to feel desired, I want to feel attractive, I want to feel competent, I want to feel uh, connected with the other person. Notice I'm not talking about hundreds of orgasms, I'm not talking about throbbing and clitorises and you know climbing to the moon and all that. No, no, no. That's all window dressing. You know, what's really going on with sex is that people want some combination of pleasure and closeness. And you have to figure out for yourself what combination of those two things you like and then talk with your partner, get them on board with the kind of pleasure and closeness that you like. And then whatever activities you do, it really doesn't matter. In fact, that's the title of my current book, is it? Sexual Intelligence, What We Really Want from Sex and How to Get It, Right? <laughs> I love this title. I love these little pairs up here. So, what we really want from sex is not hundreds of orgasms and orgies and hanging from the ceiling and all that. What most people want is some combination of pleasure and closeness. And the way to create those things is to be relaxed, accept your body, Reach out to your partner in a friendly way. And throw all the arms and legs up in the air and see where they land. Oh, and uh, that leads us to our to the last question from this section, which is make sure that you're not taking the chance of an unwanted pregnancy. And uh, last question of the section, how do I ensure that I won't get pregnant? Well, you know, modern science has created so many helpful ways to ensure that people who don't want to get pregnant don't get pregnant. Now, the easiest way to not get pregnant is to not have intercourse. And there are lots of ways to have fabulous sex without a penis in a vagina. Oral sex, hand jobs, uh, elbow up the nose. There are lots of ways that people have enjoyable sexual connection. And that's why in my office, we don't talk about real sex. We don't talk about intercourse as real sex. There's sex. And intercourse is only one kind of sex, you know, and um, it's a nice kind of sex, but it's the only kind of sex that requires birth control. And for that matter, it's the only kind of sex that requires an erection. But I digress. So how do you ensure that you won't get pregnant? Well, number one, you don't have to have intercourse. And number two, you can use one of the many products that are available. Some require a physician's prescription, some don't. Some of the many products. Uh, and why are there so many products out on the market? Because different people have different needs. Some people, they're only having intercourse three or four times a year. So those people don't want, want to be on a, 
uh, a medication that they have to take every day and that uh, affects their body the entire year. Other people, they're having sex a couple of times a week and so using something like a birth control pill or uh, an injectable, that makes more sense. For some people, there's the IUD. You have a physician put it in. Uh, and then you can forget about it for three years. And then if you have sex once a day or once a year, it works just the same. So, in summary, how do I ensure I won't get pregnant? Number one, have sex in ways other than intercourse. Number two, use one of the really reliable products out there, condoms, birth control pills. Condoms really work, by the way. Condoms, birth control pills, whatever kind of uh, method you use. And if your partner says, oh, I don't want to use one of those methods, it's not necessary, it's not reliable, it's not this or that, um, that's kind of a showstopper. You really want to stop and say, wait, wait, wait. If we can't agree on what kind of birth control we want to use, then we're not ready for intercourse right now. Let's have one of these other fabulous kinds of sex. Intercourse with that birth control, that's really not what smart people do. And if you're involved with Empower.com, I know you're a smart person. So if you have any other questions, you can go to empower.com slash ask, and um, I'm hoping that you're having some good sex pretty soon. This is Dr. Marty Klein. Thank you.